Hi, you two. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Okay. I'm asking every new cast member the same question. If there was a scale for you from super fan to never watched it, where did you fall prior to landing your role? Super like, fan. Yeah, super fan. Started at Lifetime before I even went to Netflix. I was an OG U fan. <laughs> I was so, going to I feel like but, you need that tattoo. OG U. Yeah. Lifetime OG. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Joe describes your characters as the most insane damaged people on earth. Irony aside from Joe saying that, is that fair or would you like to defend your character's honors? It's it's fair. Obviously, he's judging them before he's got to know them. So I have a lot of love for, for Phoebe, Phoebe and Adam. But um, I mean, they're pretty insane. They've got no <laughs> sense of reality whatsoever. And they've definitely got some damage. <laughs> I love them, but they both need to go to therapy and couples therapy. <laughs> it happened like Reiki or something, just cleanse yeah, the aura. Energy cleansing. They need, they need They need crystals. They need the yep. whole thing. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you, Tilly, what do you feel like Lucas has most in common and least in common with Adam? And then Lucas, I will ask the same, your perception of Tilly and Lady Phoebe. Good question. Hmm. <laughs> um, I think Adam and Lucas both know how to have a good time. I think they're both really fun people, very sweet, very charming. You're very charming, so is Adam. And I think least, I think you have a lot of respect for people and you are a very non-judgmental person. Uh, whereas I think Adam's quite the opposite and doesn't give a lot of time for people that he doesn't seem worthy. Lucas is totally opposite. He's a very, very lovely, friendly guy. Oh, thank you. That's the best compliment you're going to get out of me. <laughs> you didn't tell me that on set. Um, <laughs> I think Tilly is innately the most kindest, purest ray of light. You see her in a room and you're just drawn to her. She's so, she is the room. When Tilly Keeper goes into the room, the room is Tilly Keeper, period. So that... <laughs> And uh, Lady Phoebe, definitely, they share that in common. I think the thing that they least share in common is I think Lady Phoebe has a lack of awareness that Tilly does have. Tilly is very aware. Tilly is quite, quite smart and quite aware of people and their motives. She's a smart one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those are the best answers, you guys. I love that. Okay, Lucas, can I ask you a bananas question? But it's literally something that I've wondered about since like, Scarface and so many movie scents. Mm. When you are snorting something off of a table, what what is it? And does it hurt? It's vitamin C, I think it is, or powdered milk. I think I asked for vitamin C because I I, I don't do lactose and I didn't want to have an accident yeah. on so I think I just snorted <laughs> vitamin C and it hurts. I got a nosebleed by the end of the day. Uh actually that's not true. I got a nosebleed not from the vitamin C. I got a nosebleed because I tried to be really cool and look like I knew what I was doing and like shoved the the bill up my nose. So that was my fault, not productions. I take full responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Tilly also good your wardrobe and residences as Lady Phoebe, was there anything that you were tempted to just pocket? take home with you oh I don't know not that I tried um, there were so many I love the Vivian Westwood corset that I wear in episode four um because I could just wear that with jeans like you don't have to wear it for what it is um like a suit Lucas I actually really wanted the suit that Lucas wears oh, in episode one YSL suit, right yeah the YSL suit it was it was so me and he would I had sticky fingers around that suit I was like <laughs> get that to me I sold the St. Laurent boots. Thank you, Sam Perry, for making the best outfits of all time. But I definitely stole all the shoes. Yes. Thank Did you. you steal that blue, the blue fuzzy sweater too, Lucas? Because I, I kind of wanted that. Are you kidding me? Listen, that was the one outfit, the one outfit of everything that Adam wore that I <laughs> could not handle. I look like I'm in Monsters, Inc. It is. Don't tell my joke. You walked on set and I went, oh my God, you look like Sully from Monsters, Inc. That and that put him in a joke. worse mood. He couldn't <laughs> actually laugh at that joke. <laughs> I, I was having a mental breakdown wearing that that outfit, but thank you for loving it, Kim. I will I will lend it to you or Tilly because you guys loved it. Oh, Excellent. that mullet hair is going to give me an itch. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Greetings from Seattle, Ed. How are you? Good. How are you, Kim? How is it up there? 
It is uh, a little cold and gray. It's a little Londony today, to be honest. How is it there? Uh, I mean, it's very sunny in Los Angeles today. It's... Oh, you're in LA. Yeah, lucky, come on. Lucky you. Very <laughs> smug. As an Englishman in LA, we're always smug. <laughs> well, I'm asking every new cast member if there is a you scale from super fan to never watched it. Where do you fall on that spectrum? I have to say I'm now a super fan, but at the at the point of being asked to to look at this part, I, uh, I I'd never watched it. However, I have to say my my agent Rebecca um, in the UK, she was an avid lover. She still is. She's like can't contain her excitement about this coming out. But she's like I, I, if this role comes your way, you are a hundred percent doing it. You're not. You're not even. There's no. There's no second questioning. There's no. I'm not. There's no. I'm not taping. There's none of that. You are doing this part. Trust me. It will be a great move. And I, I, I yeah. And I have to thank her for it. Yeah, I was going to ask. Did she threaten to pull representation if you, I mean, if you sure, didn't go for it? Sure, it was. I'm sure it was the next tactic. I'm sure that. Was <laughs> the next tactic. Okay, without giving anything away, your character bonds with Joe over certain commonalities in their backgrounds. Did you and Penn bond over anything in real life? Yeah, I think. We're, yeah, we did. Uh, we, we we got on famously. Uh, you know, we're similarish age. He's a bit older, um, but. Uh, <laughs> both have a young family uh we're both used to having to be away from them and i think you know we, we, we had a, we had a similar passion for music for, for for literature for art for 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 tv for film for and we, and we talked very early on we used to get into very deep chats about the world and you know what it's all about which i love doing but it's nice to do it with someone like Penn because it's always quite easy it's not you know i mean he's a fiercely intelligent man so sometimes i'm desperately trying to keep up with what he's saying and just doing a lot of nodding in a very you know I, I put on my best my best actor's performance to try and you know pretend that i'm 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 matching him what would you say uh sort of came the most naturally to you playing reese and what was the most unnatural part of that character well i i feel that i share a similar interest in human behavior to Reese. I feel that he is, um, I think he's, he's fascinated by, by people and what makes them tick. And he, he's also interested in, in giving people a second chance. Cause he's, you know, he's been given many a second chance. And I think that he has a, a, a real belief at his core that people should be able to, and people shouldn't have to like carry weight of their past with them all the time. So I think that's also why him and Joe hit it off so well. And I feel that I have a, you know, I, I share that, that feeling, that thought, um, because, you know, we're not all, it's not as simple as we're all good and bad. I think we, we, we do fall somewhere in the middle and, you know, we're, you know, we're allowed, you know, humans are allowed to make mistakes. And I think that that's something that Reese and I both adhere to. To binge or not to binge, what do you recommend to audiences when season four drops? Oh, uh, I mean, the, the only thing I would say, and I think it's a really smart move by Netflix, is because they're putting it in two parts. If you binge all five really, really quickly, you're going to have to rewatch them again by the time the second part comes out to just <laughs> like, check in with what's going on in the first. And I just think that we should just take it back to how it used to be in the 90s and a bit later, you know, even later, later than that, where we, you know, we used to watch one episode. Just just give yourself, allocate your time, go, this is my you night. This is my you episode night. You turn your phone off, you turn everything off and you watch it for an hour wholeheartedly. And then you pick another night and you do the same thing again. And then by the time March comes around, you'll be ready for the second wave. I think that's the way, personally, I think that's the way to go. It's more enjoyable. Prior to getting cast in this, where did you fall on the U scale from super fan to never watched? Oh, no, I, I had seen it all. I had, I'd watched it all. Um, and I think, I think I definitely, uh, it was one of those, I'd, I'd watched it all in one go as well as it was one of the ones that you can binge but yeah I I really really loved the show so I was so excited when I found out it was coming to London. Okay so given that obviously we hear Joe's internal dialogue all the time what was your internal dialogue the first day that you are shooting a show that you had enjoyed watching? Do you know what weirdly calm I was actually quite calm and I think you know when things like this happen you don't sort of take it in as it's happening, you don't realize, you just sort of, it happens. And then months go by and you go, oh my God, I can't believe that I got through that. And, but I, I, I did feel calm. And one of the first people I met was Penn. We did our screen tests together. Um, and as soon as I met him, I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be fine. He's got, 
he's got a very calming quality about him. So yeah, um, I was surprisingly chilled. Yeah. Your uh, Instagram bio calls you an accurate Virgo, which would lead me to believe you actually have a lot in common with Nadia. Yes. Do you know what? I did just say this. I was like, I think she, if if I was going to um, predict when her birthday is, I would say that she's a Virgo as well. Yeah. <laughs> Virgos are, they're very independent. They're very organized. They kind of, they're a little bit stubborn, like, no, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it my way. Um, and I am like that. And I'm I'm very clean and tidy. And she just seems like that type of person that like you, you can't have all your ducks in a row as much as she does if you're not that organized and clean and tidy yeah the the way I describe it I'm like my friends always say I'm like the Monica Geller of of my friends (laughs) that's the best way (laughs) I hope that means you could also make me an excellent meal because that's also a great quality like yeah I can do that I love hosting yeah (laughs) um I imagine it's not easy joining a show in its fourth season necessarily but these were your stomping grounds that you were shooting on. So were you informing Penn a lot of the time or was he the one making you feel at home? I mean, yeah, he de- he definitely made me feel um, at home in terms of like being a part of the show, 100%. Um, but all of the crew were English and all of the, you know, most of the cast were English. So I think it didn't feel too far away from me. Um as much as it would have done if I had to like move away. I was going home every night, so which I never do. So that made it feel, I think that's probably what made me feel more relaxed, actually. What, if if any, is the most surreal fan encounter that you've had? Because it's been months now since you guys wrapped and everyone knows that you're on this show. Are people trying to get you to give up the goods? um I think people definitely want to know what's what's happening yeah and and a lot of my friends are like do you die who dies who gets killed and I'm like I I gen- that was quite annoying that you finished work at the end of the day and you want to you know come home and and, and and tell your friends and family about it and you actually can't so it's like yeah I had a good day at work that's all you're getting and I had the cat soup lunch so that's that's all I can say 